Hello, my name is Alan Newberry, and today we're going to take this bar of inch and a quarter by one quarter inch, bar of 5160, and forge this full tang knife right here. In the following videos, we'll go through and do the heat treating and putting the handle on. So let's go ahead and get started. Something that I like to do whenever I'm forging is to get rid of the sharp edges so that I don't cut my hands if I'm not using gloves, and also round over the corners just a little bit. This helps to avoid fish lips whenever you're forging the point, which I'm going to do now. Now I like to forge the tip pretty hot. If it starts to become red, I'm just going to put it back in the fire and heat it back up because when I'm trying to move that much metal it just seems like a waste of time if it's not hot. Right here I'm kind of finishing up the point and now I've already started to kind of move into getting the blade shape profiled. Here I've got the, uh, the general shape of the blade done and I am putting the blade material over the edge of the anvil and hammering the edge of the anvil up into the blade steel forming the transition between the handle and the knife blade and using that anvil as uh, the tool to shape the bottom of the handle. And an important thing to note there is the angle, so I'm kind of trying to... At first I put it at a steep angle and then I kind of lower it down to approximately the angle that I want on the bottom of my knife handle. So I just continue with that and then I start actually hammering on the edge. This knife uh, I was thinking probably would be a brute de forge. I could change my mind on that still because it's not really set in stone. So I'm not going to hammer too far up towards the spine. That way I have a nice flat area up towards the spine with some of that uh, as forged finish on it and that's relatively flat up there. Um, you could try to stretch out the blade more if you weren't trying to do a brute de forge. And I may still change my mind and not do a brute de forge on this one because uh, it's still within the realms of possibility because I haven't done anything that I couldn't just grind out. So here I'm still working on the edges and trying to make sure I get kind of everything aligned. And uh, the blade's pretty much done at this point, and I'm just making sure everything is the way I want it to be before I turn my attention towards the handle. I'm kind of eyeballing how far I want it, then I cut it off, and after I've got it cut off, then I can flip that knife around, and I'll put it in the forge and start hammering on it, and uh, I'm still kind of eyeballing it. Here I'm thinking maybe a little bit longer, so I can kind of stretch that out and flare the, the butt end of the handle out just a little bit, and uh, make sure that I have the knife handle the, the approximate shape that I want it to be. We've just about got the shape of the knife done. I'm putting just a little bit more curve into the handle. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit. Then after that, going to do some straightening. All that involves is looking at the knife from various angles and making sure everything's lined up and giving maybe a few little taps here and there to correct any twists or bends. Then we're moving on to normalization. For that, I like to heat up the blade to where it's a little bit past magnetic. Maybe around heat treating temperatures are just slightly higher and then let it cool off in still air until that hot blade has come down to a temperature where you can't see any heat in the steel anymore. Then I put it back in with the heat in the forge turned down and then let it cool off again. As you can kind of see there, it looked like it was cooled off outside, but when I came inside, uh, magically it looks hotter. So it's very important to look in a dark area at your blade, otherwise it's going to be hard to really judge the temperature. 
for the third time, I've got the forge turned down just about as low as I can get it. And I'm looking for maybe a dull cherry red color. And so I'm going to heat that up. I like to start with the uh, handle into the knife and heat that up until I get it right and then flip it around and do the blade. That makes getting the blade temperature a little bit uh, even a lot easier. What normalization is going to do for us is take the grain size from a large size down to a small size. It's going to make sure the carbides are a good size and evenly distributed and it's also going to help relieve any stresses that we may have put in there during the hammering and the heating processes of forging. So it's a very important tool. It also makes the blade softer so that we can grind on the blade and we can also drill the blade. I hope that you enjoyed this video. We're going to be following this knife along in subsequent videos doing the grinding, the heat treating, and putting the handles on. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of those. And if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments section below. Thanks.